Hey guys, Paul here from polymath.com. Welcome to another episode of the Polymath Show. In this episode, I want to talk about how to get free traffic to a blog post. I did a survey last year. You guys told me that one of the top three things you want me to talk about is how to get traffic to a blog. How do you build a blog and how do you get search engine optimized? How do you get free traffic coming to your site? So I want to talk about that today. Let's take an example. Let's say that you're an aquarium blogger. You write all kinds of content about aquariums and aquarium fish or even if your blog is not specifically just about aquariums, but let's say you got yourself a goldfish and you went out there and you started looking for food. What kind of food can you fit, uh, feed a goldfish? And let's just say that you've tested a few different types of food and you notice that most goldfish food has an odor to it, that it stinks. So you put the, f the food in the fish tank and then it makes your fish tank smell. So you went out there, you did some research, you went to a bunch of uh, different uh, pet stores and let's just say that you found the perfect goldfish food that doesn't stink. So you want to write a blog post about it, you think it's valuable, you say, hey, I'm going to share this with the world, I'm going to tell people about this awesome food. So here's what I see a lot of bloggers do. They make the mistake of picking the wrong title. That's the first thing you want to focus on is picking the right title for your blog post. Now, here's a, a, an example of a blog post title. Amazing flakes that don't stink. These are the types of clever, you know, they seem clever um, blog posts that I see bloggers uh, creating as the title of their blog post. Now, here's what's the challenge of this? The challenge is this. If you go to google.com, go to google.com and search for Google Keyword Tool, okay? When you search for that, you'll be taken to the Google Keyword Tool, which you can then type in the word amazing flakes that don't stink, and Google will tell you how many people are searching for that specific phrase every month. And I did this, I checked into it, and the answer is zero. Zero people search for amazing flakes that don't stink. Now, are people out there looking to figure out the answer to, hey, what's a good goldfish food? Yes, they are, but they're not searching amazing flakes that don't stink. Why would they? That just, that's a ridiculous thing to type into a search engine if you're looking for goldfish food. What's a better one? Let's say best goldfish food. A little bit better. How many searches does that get? I think it was about 400. Okay. Is this better than this? Absolutely. Zero, 400. 400 per month, much better, right? Look look a little bit further, what else can we find out? We find out what about what to feed a goldfish. Boom, we checked 1600 per month, about four times as much traffic. Now that's based on the broad keyword. You might have to do a little bit more research, look at the exact keyword statistics and check. This one might be better than this one, I don't know. You have to check into it. I just did a very, very quick search and I found that this one was gets more traffic than this one on a broad search. I think on the exact search, this one actually gets a little bit more than this one. But my point is, either one of these titles is a thousand million times better than this one. So forget stupid titles like this, okay? Pick the right title for your blog post. You don't have to do this for every blog post. I'm just talking about that one that you want to promote per week or one per month, whatever. Pick the right title, number one. Make sure you do that. Number two, content. If you're gonna write a blog post that you're gonna spend the time promoting, make sure you promote something with a lot of good content. If your blog post is two sentences long, don't bother promoting that one. Create a good quality uh, blog post Spend your time promoting that one. That way anyone who comes to the blog post that comes off of the search engines for free will also share it with their friends if it's a good resource. That'll help you to even promote it more. So make sure you have good content. Secondly, headers. Use proper headers. So when you're writing your blog post, okay, if this is your content, right, break up your content and throw in a header. Right, an H1. Look in your in, in WordPress. You can see these are called H1 or an H2 uh, headers. They break up the content. What you can do with these headers is you can throw in those keywords into the headers. So you let's say you let's say you picked what to feed a goldfish as your blog title, right? So that's your blog title here. Now you've got this other keyword, best goldfish food. You can talk about all the different types of foods that you that you were looking for, and then you have a header, best goldfish food you know, in H1 here or in H2 here, best goldfish food, and then you can talk about the best goldfish food that you found. So that hits Google with, you know, the title and the headers are some of the most important things that Google looks for on your on site. Of course, they look at the content as well. So make sure you use proper headers. Images. Take a few pictures of the gold food, uh, goldfish food. So let's say this is the goldfish food. Take a digital camera, take a picture, right? Take two or three pictures different angles, whatever you want to do, throw it into the blog post. And what you want to do, what do you name the images, right? When they come off of your digital camera, what do they, what do they name? They're named something like D, 
SC00045.jpg, right? That's what they come off the camera, some crazy name like that, right? Some numeric value. What you want to do, rename that. Okay, what do you need to rename it to? Guess what? Best goldfish food, best underscore goldfish underscore dot JPEG. Right? Or what to feed a goldfish dot JPEG. Name your images based on the keywords that you're going after, right? Not saying these are specifically the keywords you're going after, but whatever they are, name your images based on those. So when Google looks through your content, they see the title is based on the keyword, the content is based on the keyword, your headers are based on the keyword, you've got images based on the keyword. That's all good check marks from Google. So make sure you do that. Thirdly, this is all on-site stuff. So this is all stuff that you do on your site to improve your search engine rankings for that um, blog post. Now, this only really counts for maybe 10 to 20% of your search engine rankings. And this is where most people leave it off. They go, okay, I've done this, I'm done, I've done my SEO, they call it. No way, 80% happens in number three right here, okay? Here's three things you need to do. You need to build some links to your blog. That's how you really promote it. That's the real secret sauce to getting your blog posts ranking high in the search engines, okay? Three things that I recommend you do. Number one, create a very short YouTube video related to the blog post. Now, don't overthink this, guys. This is very simple stuff. All you need to do, get a little flip camera, flip video camera. You can buy them for 100 bucks, or just use a simple webcam that came with your laptop or came with your computer, or go pick one up. You can get a webcam for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. Cheap stuff, don't worry about it. Don't overthink it. Don't try to make it perfect. All you do, make a short video. What's the video about? Well, it could be something like this. Hey guys, this is Paul from paulsaquariumblog.com and I bought a goldfish a month ago. I fed it different types of food. All, you know, all the different types of food that I fed it, it made my aquarium stink. It pissed me off, I went to the store and I bought these goldfish flakes. These things don't stink. I recommend you guys check them out. That's it, that's it, that's the video, 30 seconds. That's all you need to do. It doesn't have to be super complicated. If you wanna make it better, great. But it's better to have a 10, like 30 second video even a 20 second video, then no video at all. Don't overthink it. Take that video, upload it to YouTube. Guess what? What title do you give the YouTube video? Best goldfish food, right? Or what to feed a goldfish, whatever, whichever one you pick. Name the video that based on those keywords. Then below the video, if you look on YouTube, if you have the video here, below the video you have a little description part here. In that description, you want to link to your blog post okay so when google looks at the video it sees okay the video is about what to feed it or uh, best goldfish food and then there's a link linking back to your blog post right and then what you do is you take that same video and you embed it inside the blog post itself so if this is your blog post right there's the content there's the header that you put in there's the title somewhere in there you want to embed the video so what does that do that tells google they're looking through your content they're like hey the title Best goldfish food. What do you think this article is about? It's probably about goldfish food, right? The content talks about best goldfish food. You got a couple of headers, what to feed a goldfish, or vice versa. And there's a video in there that talks about best goldfish food or what to feed a goldfish. What do you think that tells Google? That tells them that, hey, this article is probably about goldfish food, right? So now you got the video in there. And how it works is that on YouTube, this links to this post. This being embedded in here also gives you better rankings on your video as well because you're embedding the video in a post that's related to feeding goldfish or what to feed a goldfish right so you're getting double benefit there a lot of people create videos on YouTube and then they forget to link to their blog post or vice versa they they don't embed they create a video here and then they don't embed it in their blog post make sure you do both that's number one number two Create a short article, 400 words, 450 word article related to goldfish food, okay? And then take that article and upload it to eZine Articles, okay? eZineArticles.com, go and upload that article to eZine Articles. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, but Paul, I've already spent one hour writing a blog post, right? You're telling me that I have to go create even more content? Yes, go out there and create an article and then link it back to the blog post, okay? It might seem like a little bit more work, but I guarantee you're gonna get way more traffic than if you just keep pumping out blog posts without promoting them. So write an article on these are articles and within that article near the bottom you're allowed to read their guidelines but you're allowed to include a link they call it a self-serving link you're allowed to include um, a link 
back to your blog post, right? So at the bottom of your article on eZine articles, essentially what you do is you have a bunch of, so there's your content near the bottom, work into one of the paragraphs, work in the words best goldfish food, right? And then make that the anchor text that links back to your blog post. So the sentence might be something like, um, after, a lot of, after a lot of frustration, I went to several pet stores, talked to several owners, and I finally found the best goldfish food on the market. Right? That could be the final sentence in your article on, on eZen articles. And then the words best goldfish food become a link that links back to your blog post. Okay? So that's number two. It takes a little bit of effort. So does the YouTube video. Right? But I guarantee you this stuff works. And thirdly, this is probably the simplest one. Here's what you do. You go out and you um, you go to a website called comlove.com. C O M L U V dot com. Okay? You go there and there's you're gonna find a little search engine on there. And you type in there um, aquarium aquariums or goldfish or something like that. Something related to the article that you're writing. What it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a listing of all the blog posts out there that are using the Calm Love plugin, which I'll talk about in a second. It'll give you a listing of all the blog posts out there that are using the Calm Love plugin that are related to aquariums or goldfish. Okay, so it's going to give you a list. It's going to give you a list of all these different blog posts. What you do is you click on these, click on the first one, open it up in a new tab, okay, and it's going to take you to a blog that somebody has written related to aquariums or goldfish, right? And below that, gold, at the bottom of that blog post, you're going to have the ability to leave a comment, right? Just like any other blog, you can leave comments. Now, here's what you want to do. Read the blog post. Make sure you read it so that you can leave a genuine, real comment. Don't spam comments. Here's what you want to do. Go to the bottom of that, and it's going to give you the option, when you're leaving the comment, it's going to ask you for three things. Name, right? email, and it's going to ask you for your website. You've seen this a million times. Every blog post, every blog out there has this. You want to leave a comment, ask you, what's your name, what's your email address, what's your website, right? So here's what you do. You put in your name, you put in your email, and you put in your website URL here, right? Now here's what happens. Here's the little box here where you type in your comment. Below that, you will see this little icon. You're going to see the Calm Love plugin installed here. Now here's, here's the magic that happens. As soon as you type in the URL of your website and you hit tab to go to this next, to this box, this thing will do this little thing and what it'll do is it'll go to your blog, right? And it'll retrieve your last blog post, which will be best goldfish food or what to feed a goldfish. And it'll display it right here at the bottom, okay? You write your blog post, sorry, you, you leave your comment. Make sure this is a real comment. Don't spam comments, guys. This is the surest way. If you start going to these blog posts and just leaving stupid comments that say like, great article, you know, you're going to get flagged as a spammer. Your domain is going to get banned in, in the Acusment plugin for WordPress. You're not going to be able to leave comments on anybody's blog after that. Make sure you read the actual article or watch the video that, that's on that blog post and leave a genuine comment. Take the time. I know it takes a little bit of time, but take the time and leave a real comment, okay? So once you leave your real comment uh, and you click submit, what that's going to do is underneath your comment, and if you want to see this in action, just you can visit my blog, uh, polymath.com, and you'll see under every one of my blog posts I have this uh, plugin installed. What it's going to do is it's going to leave your comment, and below that there's going to be a link, okay? So this plugin allows um, bloggers to reward their visitors for leaving comments by including a link at the bottom, right? So that's essentially what you do. You go to seven different blogs and you leave seven different comments um, with the Calm, uh, make sure that these blogs have the Calm Love plugin installed. And that's how you, you go to calmlove.com and there's a search engine then that sh shows you all the different blog posts that, or all the different bloggers out there that are using this plugin. There's millions of them out there so just Use this thing and you'll find it. So at the end of the day, here's what this looks like. Instead of writing a blog post, okay, let's say this is your blog, right? Instead of just going out and writing blog post after blog post after blog post after blog post and getting no traffic to them, right? Zero traffic, zero traffic, zero traffic. And you get frustrated because you keep writing all this content and you're not getting any traffic. Here's what you do. Instead, you go, here's your blog. You write one blog post. Okay, this is your blog post. What do you do? you make sure your title 
is right. That requires a little bit of keyword research, a little bit of time. So you go and you do your research, right? Takes a little bit more time, but that's okay. Secondly, you want to make sure that the content is right. Right, what I talked about, make sure you got your headers, your content is good, and you got some images in there, right? So throw those in, headers and images. And thirdly, promotion off-site. Right, promote your blog off-site. Well, this is basically linking, getting links to your site. So three things, YouTube, go create a short little YouTube video. Two, create a little article, right? The YouTube video points back to your site and your site points back to the video by embedding the video. The article on Ezen articles is a one-way link pointing back to your site. Make sure that the article is related to the content. Like, Don't write an article about horses and try to link it back to a, a, uh, a blog post about goldfish food, obviously. Make sure that the article is related to the topic. It doesn't have to be exactly about goldfish food. It could be about goldfish. It could be about aquariums. But it has to be somewhat related to the blog post that you've written. And thirdly, Go out there and get seven, um, leave seven comments on seven blogs that are related to the aquarium or goldfish related stuff, or even pets and stuff like that. Get those pointing to that. Now here's the thing. Actually, all of these arrows should be pointing here to this post, right? Here's the thing. If you write a blog post, You've got the title right, you picked the right title, you've got the content right, you've got the headings, you've got the images in there, right? And you've got a YouTube video pointing back to it, you've got an Ezine article pointing back to that blog, and you've got seven other blog, related blogs, all pointing back to this uh, blog post. Where do you think that's going to put you in terms of search engine rankings compared to other bloggers out there who have written the same blog post? Because I guarantee you're not the only blogger in the, in the world that has written a blog post about best goldfish food or what to feed a goldfish, right? There's millions of blogs out there. You could be competing against thousands of people. But how many people are willing to make sure that they got the right title, right? Probably 80% of people get that part wrong. So you're in the top 20% just with the title. Now, out of those people, how many people are willing to figure out the right headers and rename their images from the standard camera images into the proper image format? Boom, you just separated yourself. Now you're in the top 2%. Then, how many of those people are willing to create a video, an article, and 10 comments? Almost nobody. When I do this for my blog posts, I see an almost like 98% success rate. It's not going to happen with every single, if you pick a really competitive keyword, it's not going to work. But for most of the stuff, it will work. Try this out with the next, um, if you write, like I said, if you're one of those bloggers that writes three or five articles a week, but you're not getting any traffic, do this with just one blog post per week for the next four weeks, and then measure, and then track your rankings for that keyword. You're gonna be amazed how much traffic you're gonna start getting just by promoting your blog post instead of just writing something and dumping it out there and hoping for the best. If you do this, you don't have to do this forever. Just start doing this with a few of your blog posts and eventually you start to build, you know, that 1,600 people per month, they'll start coming to your blog. Even if you're only getting 10% of that, right? Every month to that one blog post, you're getting 160 people visiting that blog post, joining your email list, you know, promoting, promoting that blog post to their friends on Facebook or, you know, retweeting it on Twitter and stuff like that. All the people on YouTube are also watching your videos and they're sending, that, um, sending you um, links, putting, the, you know, maybe talking about the video in their, in their Facebook or something like that. All this stuff starts to kind of exponentially grow. Do this three or four times a month and I guarantee you're going to start seeing traffic growing on your blog. It doesn't cost you anything except a little bit of extra effort. And if you're already producing the content out there, all I'm saying is just take this. This is the most important step right here. If you do nothing except these three steps, you're going to start seeing huge, a huge difference in your traffic. Okay? If you hit all three of these, guarantee you're going to see, start seeing results. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content like this on YouTube, click the little like button. So tell me that you, that you enjoyed this and you found it useful. Um, you can find more content like this on my blog at polymath.com. And if you guys are interested in more specific content like this on how to blog, how to make money online, I have created a, um, the Polymath Mentorship Club. If you're interested in that, just go visit polymathmc.com for more information. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.